digital ID system is great. It's the same propaganda they're using around the world. This is part of the, what's ironic about what you're about to hear, which you've heard me cover many times, but if you're new to it, you probably haven't, new to the channel, is that some of the ways they market the digital ID, of course, is that it's convenient, it's quick, and then they try to use fear tactics like what you'll hear in this video as far as having your ID stolen online. This is something they planted in people's heads, but the irony Thank of it all is video. that you're the one Thank who's going enjoy. to be hacked, Appreciate not your identity. You, as a human a being, here, will so be hackable. Once this technology, of course, is eventually inside of you, but it starts with digital ID. Yeah, this is Australia's Guerrero. propaganda as they're the getting format. closer to accelerating the digital ID by been the end of the now, year. But apparently not. Constantly verifying your ID can be a hassle. They suck. Sharing your driver's license. Proof of aid. going to lead you into this. That's why it's so important in America to keep your eye on Bitcoin and the digital currency push in this country. Once they get you online, they have full control. Okay, so they'll give the illusion that Artificial Bitcoin and a lot of these digital currencies like Ethereum are all separate from the liberals currency, which will be the central bank digital currency. Right. So people will think they're free from the deep state because they and look, they're going to believe it hook, line and sinker. They already believe Donald Trump. They already believe a guy that's, you know, openly involved with people that are caught up in some of the most disturbing lifestyles you could possibly imagine involving young children which we can't go into on this channel i just covered it over on my website talking about a lot of these guys who portray themselves as patriots who are really just as involved as the democrats are they're working the people so let's look at these two stories let's start here with the no racial identifiers in the digital id because this is a this is one of those things you have to keep an eye on how they lure people into this stuff right Finance Minister Katie Gallagher rejected proposals to amend a prohibition or including racial identifiers with the incoming Australian National Digital ID. Australia's domestic payment organization, which is called AP+, has been resisting the proposed ban on embedding racial identifiers in the draft legislation on the country's upcoming national digital identity. These are all things that they're using to bait people. Okay? Equality. Racial stuff, gender stuff, this is all to bait you. They're literally convincing you that you need to want enslavement. And these people are going to be begging for it. They're going to be asking to be enslaved because they're going to think, because of all the deception going on, all the psyops going on, that, well, you know, it doesn't see skin color. You know, AI governance doesn't see skin color anymore. We have to worry about those police officers arresting black people deliberately, knowing it's going to make national news so we can get everybody convinced to turn on the police, even though the police are the fraternal order of the Freemasons. Don't worry about that, because with AI governance, they don't see skin color. You see, they don't see black people as bad or white people as bad. They see all people as bad. So in Australia, they're trying to convince people that the national banks are trying to do this without having to, you know, having any type of proof on your ID about your actual skin color. Because again, it doesn't matter to them what your skin color is. You're a slave to them, no matter what your skin color is. So it says national banks and biometric testing provider, Bixie Lab, have previously raised concerns about rules referring to biometric testing, including a clause banning the collection of racial or ethnic attributes. Bixie Lab and other testing providers say that the ban prevents them from using such data to assess racial bias in biometric algorithms. The issue of racial identifiers, however, has raised questions about how the Digital ID Project would manage racial profile. Okay, so now take a step back and think. This is stuff I've been trying to get people who listen to my work understand. They've been gaslighting you with these racial things, with these gender things, okay, so that they can come out and tell you that it's a world of equality, that it's a world that doesn't see this, it doesn't see that. Everything is equal. And then people don't even realize that they've been getting worked into slavery. Right? So this isn't going to see... They're, they're doing what they can. The national banks are doing what they can to prevent testing providers from seeing biased racial data. And people go, oh, great. Good. So they could hire me. They're not going to even see on my ID what my skin color is. So I don't have to worry about getting... You know, if I go to a store, you know, they charge black people more money than white people. Oh, do they? Oh, no, they don't. So what do you what do you need this stuff to be racially biased? Well, because everybody's race. Oh, right. So you see how, where all this stuff has been heading and what it's heading towards? Okay? No genders, no race. One, one, one. It's the key word in the new world order. Right, guys, so the government's decision could present an uh, opportunity. Uh,